Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Girl Talk Sunday. I am your host, Sandy Best Life Jones, and my guests today are longtime friends of mine, Jay and Cornelia Thomas. And I'm so delighted to have them here tonight because the information that they're going to share tonight, I think, is vital in our communities. Um, we're going to talk about the work that they do and why they do it. And I think that you're going to find their story to be just as compelling as I find it to be. Um, in our pre-interview, we had a great conversation and uh, they talked about um, why they started Winds of Liberty Hope and Wellness Center and what it means to them and why they do the work that they do. And I, I was so inspired by who they are that I wanted to bring them on the show so you all could meet them. So they'll be here in just a few minutes. Um, but I do have some exciting to, news to share about Girl Talk Sunday. You can follow me on Instagram now. We are on Instagram and I'm going to put up our Instagram uh, name as soon as I find it. I, I, I'm happy about this because <clears throat> I have been going live from um, Facebook and YouTube. And now Girl Talk Sunday has its own page on Instagram. And I haven't quite figured out how to go live on Instagram. I think I can. I just I'm not sure how to do it yet. <laughs> but as soon as I figure that out, we will be live on all three platforms, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. And that excites me. I just feel like the more exposure, the better. So um, I'm excited about that. I'm so happy that all of you are here. Thank you for tuning in. I think that you're going to learn a lot tonight about, um, and, and let me just say this too. Let me say this before we get started. The work that Jay and Cornelia do is not just for married people. It's for they have classes for married couples, they have classes for engaged couples, they have classes for individuals, and they have services for families. So just I just want to make sure I put that out there. This is not just about you know the work that married couples need to do um, on their finances and in their mental health. This is for everybody. They take a holistic approach to family and relationships and money because they all go together. And when they're all in alignment, that's when you discover the freedom that you have. When your money's right and your mind is right and your marriage or relationship is right. It just all goes hand in hand. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So I am waiting for my guests to pop back into the green room and then we will start the show. So while we're waiting, I would love to hear from those of you that are here in the comments. Let me know that you're here. I see a few people. I'm excited to see you, excited to have you. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedules to be with me tonight. I appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. I know that you could be anywhere else doing anything else. But the fact that you decided to come here to be with me for about an hour or so, um, that really warms my heart. So thank you. Now I want to introduce to some and present to others my guests tonight. Jay and Cornelia Thomas. Hey. 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 <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to have you here. I just I believe that the work that you're doing is necessary. It matters. And people need to know who you are and how they can find you. So we're going to get to all of that in just a few minutes. But I want to first, I always like to share my guests' um, credentials because I need people to know you wouldn't be here if you couldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> right? You got yeah. the juice. That's good. People yeah. need to know that. So you both have um, a bachelor's in social work, correct? Yes. That's right. And then Cornelia, your master's is in education. Yes. And Jay, your master's is in nonprofit leadership. That's right. Right. Okay. So when you were 
You know what? I'm not even going there first. Mm -mm. I want to hear the love story first. I need to hear. I've heard it already, but I need my guests to hear the love story because I think the love story is the foundation of everything else that you accomplish together as a couple. Okay. So I want to hear the story. The story is absolutely amazing to me. And I'm telling you, when God orchestrates mm -hmm. the union of two people, mm -hmm. amen. It's it, between the highs and the lows and the peaks and the valleys, whatever. What God brings together, let no man put us under. Amen. And the way the two of you met and how all of that came to be is such a God story to me. So I don't know who's going to tell the story. I'm going to let y'all decide that. But we got to hear the story. Go ahead. I think I'm telling the story. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> well, Sandy, we have been together. Well, it will be 29 years in August. And that's marriage, right? Marriage. Marriage. Okay. We dated for five years and we had a year engagement. Okay. So we've been together for over 30 years. I've known him longer than I haven't, which is <laughs> crazy, right? Right. Um, we met at the University of Washington where we got our bachelor's degree. Um, the story is crazy, just like you said. Um, he was already going to school. Um, I was late getting my fees in, so I didn't have a dorm. And I'm <laughs> traveling from Tacoma uh, to Seattle for classes. And I have a class in psychology um, in Kane Hall. And for those of you who know about Kane Hall, like there's 300 students in that class. I think it's 374 students. I'm running late and I go to the balcony because there's nowhere to sit downstairs, right? So I have to go up to the balcony to listen to the lecture and it's standing room only. And I'm talking, there's about, I don't know, at least 50 people standing in the back of the balcony um, because there's no seats but one. Mm -hmm. One seat left. One seat. One <laughs> seat left. I'm exhausted. I was just on the I-5 for the last hour. Oh. <laughs> so I'm not standing up in the balcony, right? I want to sit down. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't, I can't stand up for an hour and a half lecture. So the one seat left on the very end was next to this Fine gentleman right here. <laughs> the one seat left, y'all. I need you to wrap your mind around that. One. The one seat left was yeah. next to Jay. It was. Mm. Mm -mm. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked him if this seat is taken, and he said, no, sit down. So I sat down. We didn't talk then because we're in a lecture, right? And then I get assigned to a dorm, and I'm walking in the front doors to move in and who gets off the elevator? Mm. <laughs> who helps me move into my dorms? Mm. <laughs> mm. Who lives on the sixth floor? Who lives on the seventh floor? <sighs> so we yeah. begin studying for psychology. Wow. So Jane, what did you think? What were you thinking when she sat down next to you? Be honest, <laughs> be honest. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, that was my, my first year in college. And so mm -hmm. I was nervous, uh, just about being on the college campus. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I noticed her, I mean, you know, she, she was a good looking woman, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I was pretty much focused on what was going on. So we exchanged pleasantries. Right. Um, and then we just kind of, that was, that was really it. Um, but when we met the second time, uh, mm -hmm. in the elevator in the dorms, um, you know, it was a little bit more of, you know, I noticed her a little, a little more. Yeah. I, I got to see her standing up. I'm standing up. I mm -hmm. uh, offered to help her move in. And it was at that point that we sort of started a friendship. But again, it was not, it wasn't love at first sight, anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we were both, we were both serious about uh, what we were doing and where yeah. we were at. Right. Um, yeah. So the love, and I'm sure we're going to get to that. I mean, mm -hmm. We are. This came later. Yeah. Yeah. So you were nice enough to help her move into her dorm. You were one floor separated from each other in the dorm. And when did you start to know, Jay, that there might be something to this? 
<laughs> when did you know? What did you? What did that feel like for you? And that you went to go get pizza. You know? Um, so, so I'm not exactly sure how long it took, but I, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, I think, I think, uh, we were hanging out in, in the dorm doing mm -hmm. some studying mm -hmm. and, uh, I was hungry <laughs> and <laughs> okay. decided, you know, it was time to, I, I ate a lot of pizza back mm -hmm. then. Uh, mm -hmm. They had, you could get pizza almost 24 seven. So, mm. uh, went, got some pizza. Uh, brought it back to the dorm room, and I think uh, at some point during that conversation, uh, I looked at her, looked up at her, and it just—it was different. It was almost it ha like it happened uh, in a moment, in a mm -hmm. moment. Of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I honestly can't say that I, you know, that I had a plan mm -hmm. to to get this woman. It just something happened, uh, and I, I think you had a plan. Uh, well, you know. You had a plan, man. <laughs> Come on. Uh, a long time later. Yeah. And yeah. found out later that, that it happened at exactly the same time. Wow. So you exactly. both had this, that epiphany at the same time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So fast forward a little bit. You're, you're dating in college. What was that like? Because most people go to college to do everything but date one person. <laughs> so what was that like? Yeah, no, that's right. You're gonna defer everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me it was great. Um, I think that because we were friends first, mm -hmm. uh, before we started dating, we had kind of unspoken. Uh, kind of set kind of rules of engagement around that. And our friendship was always number one. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't about dating and holding hands and being all romantic. I mean, we generally like to hang out with each other. We went to the movies, we went for walks, we went mm -hmm. to the places together. I went to his concerts because he was playing in it with the band back there, a Christian band. And we just really liked to be with each other. So the friendship took precedence. Um, over the romance. It's not that we never held hands or kissed mm -hmm. or anything, but we just really liked hanging out. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and so we truly became really, really good friends. And the romance was just kind of there on top of it. I guess you know how they say, you know, the icing on the cake, but mm -hmm. the cake was the friendship. Right. Yeah. Oh, I love that analogy. Ah, I love that. How important is that? when you are building a relationship, how important is it to make time for the friendship phase of it? Um, well, I mean, uh, it is for us, it's everything. And mm -hmm. it's been everything. Uh, you know, as my wife mentioned, 29 years mm -hmm. uh, in August of being married, uh, we certainly have gone through periods and phases where we've leaned heavily on that friendship. Mm -hmm. um, you know, romance is not a 24 seven thing. Right. Uh, and a lot of couples will tell you that, you know, you, you go through things, you go through periods and phases, you're raising children together. Um, you're figuring out life together. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those times um, it's the friendship that gets you through uh, mm -hmm. some of those tough times. Uh, and we have always, even when we talk about our relationship, mm -hmm. and we check in with each other, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even when we do that, we both have, have agreed uh, over the years that the, the friendship has been probably the most important thing that we have had that mm -hmm. we built mm -hmm. uh, we're, and we remain committed to. I like how you said it's the most important thing that you've built because relationships take work. Uh, even before you get married, like you said, you built the friendship and you dated for five years, right? Correct. And then how did the proposal happen? <laughs> well, can I just can I just say one thing that I think is really important since mm -hmm. I know that we're talking a little bit about marriage. I feel like the friendship part of um, marriage is, is kind of like a, a, is dying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people want to get married and oh, she's so fine, so cute. And the sparks are flying and mm -hmm. I, I can't wait for the romance. And so the, the friendship part is dying. But, you know, my hair is going to turn gray and I might get fat and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And mm -hmm. if there's no friendship, if you don't genuinely like me. Right. 
Right. How do you love me through my changes? Mm -hmm. Right. And, it, and it's easier when there's the friendship is not there. It's easier to let the love go. Yeah. When sure. that friendship foundation is not there, I absolutely 100% agree with that. That's a good point, Cornelia. Now I want to hear about the proposal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm 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 blanking on the name of the of the place of UW campus. What what was the name of that? You mean where the columns where are? The, columns the white are. columns are. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like a huge courtyard with white yeah. columns and. So there's a huge courtyard on campus on the UW campus, and we would go there a lot, just mm -hmm. taking walks together and hanging mm -hmm. out. And I think we both sort of fell in love with that space. Mm -hmm. And so that was the space that uh, I took her back to when uh, I wanted to propose. Mm -hmm. But how did you know? How did I know? How did you know you wanted to propose? How did uh, you know, okay, this is the woman. She that told I me. Been... <laughs> she told you? <laughs> what? No, 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 that's that's question. Right. She said, how no, did you know? I know, you? I know what she said. I know what she said. <laughs> um, so, so I, uh, I think, I mean, I think it happened uh, much sooner than I proposed. I'll say that. Uh, yeah. and, and I think I was uh, waiting on, trying to wait on God, wait on mm -hmm. affirmation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I knew that she was somebody pretty early on, mm -hmm. once we got serious, that, that somebody that I could take home to mama, first of all. Right. But then that I knew that I, uh, that I could grow old with. And, mm -hmm. and build, build a life with. Uh, and I told her to this day, you know, that I saw us when I proposed, I already saw us mm -hmm. holding gray, sitting out on the front porch, mm -hmm. watching the sun go down. Wow. You envisioned yeah. that. Yeah. I already saw it. I saw it. Uh, and wow. so um, it, when that happened, I think was when I started making plans. Okay. I need to, I need to make this woman my wife. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a five-year plan. Right. So mm -hmm. I was going to engage and then we were going <laughs> to once we got engaged, we were going to work my five year plan. Right. And that's when when we had that conversation, that's when she said, oh, no, we're not, <laughs> we're not waiting five years. You got to speed that up. So, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, be engaged for five years. Yeah. And it was, yeah. it was, you know, as a, as a man, I wanted to, I wanted to have some money. I wanted to have some things set up. I wanted to have a job, right? I had mm -hmm. all these things. Mm -hmm. and I felt like I was supposed to bring her into mm -hmm. uh, a kingdom that I was already starting to build. Mm -hmm. What she helped me see and understand was that we're supposed to build that together. That's what we do. Right? That's what, that's what we do. <laughs> right. Uh, and so she, she got me to see that. And so, yeah, yeah we moved the timeline up and, and started building together uh, much sooner. So Jay, as a man, how important was the trust factor in your decision to propose? Was there a level of trust you had to get to? Yeah. Before? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great question. Great question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I and I did. I tr I trusted her mm -hmm. uh, uh, with with my life, mm -hmm. meaning that I was going to commit the rest of my life to her. Right. Uh, and so I trusted her with my heart. I trusted mm -hmm. her. Um, yeah, yeah. I trusted her even before we had them with children, my children. Mm -hmm. um, I knew she'd be a great mom. So I trusted her even in that regard. Uh, mm -hmm. I trusted her to be an asset to me. Mm -hmm. uh, even before I really knew what that was going to look like. Mm -hmm. I, I just trusted her that she would do that. She would be an asset to me and whatever I was going to build. Mm -hmm. Um that she would not come in and and be poison in my family, mm -hmm. poison in my life. You know, we mm -hmm. see a lot of that now. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, no, I trusted her on many, many, many levels. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, which made it much easier to go ahead and and do what I wanted to do with my heart. And was it the same for you, Cornelia? Was that trust factor really important for you? Yes, and I and I wanted to say that you just said that so beautiful, mm -hmm. honey, and. I wanted to say, Sandy, that all of that was born in the friendship phase. Mm, mm -hmm. I wasn't even born in the dating. It, you, you don't learn to have that kind of trust because you're holding hands or kissing. Right, right. You learn to have that kind of trust because you're talking mm -hmm. to each other. You're having good conversation, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of that was born in the friendship, right? right? Um, so that's why taking time to be friends first is so important. Yeah, it really <laughs> um, is. Yeah. yeah. And most people want to rush past that part. Yeah. And yes, it, 
Absolutely, for me too. Um, and I think that that's what sealed the deal for us and got us to that next phase of wanting to get married is, is spending so much time in the friendship and recognizing that I could trust him uh, with my heart. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was huge, huge. Mm -hmm. And and I felt exactly the same way uh, about him that he, that he says about me. Like I knew that he would be an amazing dad mm -hmm. and um, just the way that he treated me as a friend. I always knew that he was always going to lift me up. Right. Right. And always take good care of me and protect my heart. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, that's always been in our relationship. We could be mad at each other. I have things going on and then the friendship kicks in and it's like, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to say, how did he demonstrate that to you while you were dating that he could be a good protector and provider? How did he demonstrate that to you? What did that look like for you? For me, it just like he, he was attentive. Mm -hmm. um, he listened and he listened well. Mm -hmm. Um, and he didn't rush. I, and I, I think the main thing too was he was authentic and genuine. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like he was ever played games with me. He mm -hmm. was never manipulative, played games, never had all these uh, secrets. I just felt like what I saw was what I got. Mm -hmm. um, but the other way that he demonstrated that once again was he was attentive. He listened mm -hmm. and he cared. Um, and he never, I never felt judged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By him, I never felt judged by him. I never felt like he was trying to check boxes mm -hmm. with me. <laughs> you know, like, oh, check, she's got this. Oh, check, she's got this. Oh, I'm right. Just, right. I never felt that way. I always felt like he just genuinely, genuinely um, cared about me. If it was important to me, he always wanted to know more about it. Hmm. Right. If I if I said, hey, I learned, he always wanted to know more. Mm -hmm. Um he always asked really good questions and listened and remembered and was able to come back and, and continue to have those questions. And I always felt heard. Mm -hmm. um, I always felt seen um, by him. And so mm -hmm. that let me know that this is a person I can, I can trust my heart with. So where did your faith come into play while you were dating? Because you're both Christians. Yeah. Yeah. And what did that look like? Uh, well, I would say sec, uh, it was, it was number one, you know, we talked a lot about friendship already and that being the foundation. Mm -hmm. Uh, the number one thing really was, was Christ mm -hmm. uh, and, and keeping Jesus at the center. I think we, uh, I was born and raised in the church. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, uh, even when I went to college, I think because of that, there was only so far that I, that I was going to be able to go, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and doing some of the things that other folks were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not, I mean, I, it's not that I was perfect, but, but um, mm -hmm. it's hard, it's hard to run away from, from how you were trained. Right. Uh, how you were brought it up. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So even when it came time to think about the seriousness of our relationship, Christ was mm -hmm. right there. In mm -hmm. the middle. Uh, and I uh, talked to him a lot about it, about her, asked him to show me things, uh, what I needed to know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be, to be uh, a good man. Mm -hmm. uh, a good friend to her, first of all. Uh, but then, you know, as it got more serious, what does it look like to be a good boyfriend? What does it look mm -hmm. like to to date somebody mm -hmm. uh, and and try to do it right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then when it came time to get married, it's like, Lord, what does that look like? Uh, I've seen some great examples. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, both of our parents, long, long, long successful marriages. Mm -hmm. uh, so we came we came with that, too. Uh, and and having having that in our background was huge. Okay. Yeah. I think one thing too that we didn't say that I probably we probably should say is I think the number one reason why I trusted him with my heart is because I knew that he really loved God and I knew he wasn't faking that. Mm -hmm. I knew that he would always go to God first mm -hmm. for us and about our relationship and that made me feel safe. Mm -hmm. Right? Very safe, you know. Um can't beat that. <laughs> so, you I I I think that the two of you loving God is when you were dating was great, but we know that we are human and the human side of us, when we're in love and we're all Google eyed and we're holding hands on campus and we're walking through the corridors, 
and exchanging pleasantries, as Jay likes to say. <laughs> Feelings <laughs> get stirred up. And I heard you say, Cornelia, that you had rules of engagement. Did you call it that back then? Were you cognizant of that? That's what that was? Or what What were the rules? And no. We talked about that ahead of time. We weren't cognizant of that. I mean, I, I mean, I respected him mm -hmm. and I respected um, him being born and raised in a church and what that looked like. And he really respected me being a female and a woman, a mm -hmm. woman and really put his what he had learned in front. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we knew going into dating, I guess you could say the do's and the don'ts. Right. Mm -hmm. And so and we just respected that. And we also wanted to start a relationship with God in the center, mm -hmm. right? So that was really important to both of us, extremely important to both of us. And no, we didn't call it rules of engagement. We just had a lot of communication mm -hmm. um, about what that looked like and having to shift that, you know, what we can do, what we can't do, what's good, what's not good. And just trying to, to walk the line as, as best as we could, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To uplift God and mm -hmm. what he meant to us. And, and for both of us, God was first, Mm -hmm. And so as much as you can be when you're 20, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, 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 when right, you're in your yeah. 20s, right. and we just wanted to make sure that we went, we started a marriage on the right foot. That was very important to both of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like that you said God was in the center. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get into Winds of Liberty and the work that, that you do. We're really going to talk about and really dissect what it means to have a God-centered marriage. Because... We hear that term a lot in the church, but nobody ever really explains what that means. And mm. so, you know, people can think that it means you never argue or you never disagree or every day is sunshine and roses just because you're both Christians. And we just know that is not true. So when we get into um, the work that you do, I really want you to hone in on what does it mean to have a God centered relationship? that then trans transfers over to being a God-centered marriage. What does that mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So did you get married after graduation? Yes. yes. Okay, so you got married after graduation. And mm -hmm. then um, you each, I'm assuming, went into your own separate careers, right? That's correct. Right, so what did you do after graduation, Cornelia? Um, so after graduation, I ended up working um, at the prosecuting attorney's office as a forensic specialist uh, in their um, special assault unit. That's what I said. <laughs> I bet you did. Like, oh, God. Hey, I didn't God. even use my social work. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I ended up doing that. I actually did that for 20 years. Wow. Yeah. And so, I saw on your website that you, I got my little notes right here. Um, that you facilitated child abuse investigations. Yeah. Was so that I, for, the, for the prosecuting attorney's office? Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's kind of complicated. So I was a forensic specialist. And so what mm -hmm. I did is I conducted forensic interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement's not permitted to conduct forensic interviews of people mm -hmm. under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. So I did that for all of law enforcement in Pierce County, including the FBI, as well mm -hmm. as the CID on Fort Lewis mm -hmm. um, in McCord. And so it's kind of like you see on TV, right? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, you're in there and I, I'm questioning the witness and or the victim and law enforcement watches on the other side mm -hmm. and to the witness, um, it looks like a mirror, but there's actually police sitting on the other side. Mm -hmm. so I would conduct those investigations um, and it will conduct those interviews mm -hmm. uh, for law enforcement. And then if those mm -hmm. cases went to court, I would have to testify um, for the state. Um, I always call it help put the bad guys away. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then what line of work did you go into, Jay? So I went uh, almost immediately into the nonprofit sector. Mm -hmm. uh, so my first job out of college was with uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters. Hmm. What made you go that way? What made you go into to nonprofit leadership? Um. The, the leadership part actually came later. I, mm -hmm. I, I worked in the sector for a number of years, mm -hmm. uh, at Big Brothers Big Sisters being the first job and then United Way came after that. Mm -hmm. uh, so what that did is it, it exposed me to the types of organizations that were really working in the community on behalf of 
children and families. Okay. Right. Who just who needed support in, in a number of different ways. And so I got a chance to come in and uh, learn what it means, the power of a mentor in, mm -hmm. in a young person's life, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. to how to talk with families and figure out what it is that they need. Right. Uh, and then eventually got into fundraising, which taught me how to talk to people about what's important to them mm -hmm. and then connect them to the causes that are important to them, uh, mm -hmm. which is really what fundraising is when you boil right. it down. Um, so, yeah, I think over the course of being involved in that work, after maybe five or six years in the work, that's mm -hmm. when I realized I wanted to go back and, and, and study more deeply mm -hmm. what it means to lead in that sector. Right. Uh, so I got the, the master's degree in nonprofit leadership. Okay. So you dear, it, speaking of children and family, you have two children of your own. Yes. Yes. Tell yes. me about them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sandy, you taking us everywhere tonight. Uh, hey, we can read the whole story. Because <laughs> we, it, we're going to come full, full circle with the Yeah. Day, so. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. You mm -hmm. want to talk about the kids? You want to start? Sure. Well, we have two girls. Two beautiful <laughs> girls. Indeed. Um, mm -hmm. Jael is 20, uh, tw uh, 22. She's going to be 23. So our oldest is going to be 23 in July. Mm -hmm. uh, her yeah. and I share a birthday month. Um, the baby is going to be 21 in March. Mm -hmm. And her mm -hmm. is share a birthday month. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you know what? Y'all making me sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you share a birthday month with the kids. Yeah, you, you, you find each other in the in the hall with three hundred people. Jeez, <laughs> yes. I like to tease my well. dear because anytime I see a picture posted of you and your girls, I'm like, which one is the mama? Mm -hmm. All three of you look around the same age to me. You're too kind. <laughs> no, seriously, I have to look really hard to see. Okay, that is that Cornelia. I can't. Who, they all look twelve. <laughs> no, I, but okay. No. That's awesome, though. That's awesome. So you venture out into your own careers and do your thing. You're over here, Jay. Cornelia, you're over here. But somewhere in there, there had to start to be a conversation about coming together to offer a work together. How did that conversation start? Well, I can start and you can, yeah, because I, I, there, there, I think there were a couple of things I think important to mention that built up to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things that, that we have in looking back on our marriage, mm -hmm. um, whether she had a vision, whether she wanted to, uh, to undertake something, mm -hmm. whether I had something like I've done music projects and things like that, no matter mm -hmm. what it was, we always fully supported each other. Right. And what that did is it built a foundation of trust that we could not only love each other, mm -hmm. but we actually learned that we work well together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that our, we started matching skill sets mm -hmm. and figuring out, okay, but we actually, beyond our careers, right. we actually have the makings of the ministry together. Mm -hmm. And while we didn't know what that looked like, we mm -hmm. knew that it was, it was being mm -hmm. built. Each time I did something, each time she did something, we pitched in, we got it done. Uh, and that's ultimately, I think, what led to the decision to come mm -hmm. together uh, and form Winds of Liberty. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I'll just keep talking to you. Cut me off. So uh, <laughs> ultimately, so she mentioned she mentioned her long career, right? Right. Mm -hmm. the attorney's office. Mm -hmm. And I think after 20 years. Just before that. Uh, yeah. Even before that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, had decided that, you know, wow, it, it is it is a, it takes a toll. It's mm -hmm. taxing work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always tell her, you know, you're doing God's work. You, mm -hmm. you and the folks that have to listen to those stories mm -hmm. uh, and then try to, to do your job mm -hmm. while you're listening to the most horrific stories I think anyone would ever have to hear. Right. Uh, it's amazing. And so I think after 20 years, you know, she began to have in her own heart a prayer mm -hmm. and conversation with the Lord about I'm ready to I'm ready to serve in another way. I'm ready mm -hmm. to to help people in another way. Mm -hmm. And so we started praying about that. And uh, pretty soon in her heart, the vision for Winds of Liberty was birthed, okay. uh, which, which really started with just her. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe I'll let you take, take it from there. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. probably about, I don't know, probably about six or seven years before I hit the 20 year mark, my my heart was was pretty much begging God to get me out. Right. <laughs> right. I can't. 
I can't hear this anymore. I can't do this anymore. It, mm-hmm. It's a lot. It started to take its toll. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started begging God, please let me do something different. Right. Mm-hmm. But I also, we've always agreed. We, we're going to follow him. And until he tells me I can go or until mm-hmm. he releases me, I have to stay mm-hmm. and rely on him to give me the strength to continue on. Right. Um, and so, yes, uh, Jay's right. Then it just, this vision started to happen happen this this birthing you know almost like giving birth to another child i mm-hmm. I, I would you know you, i'd be driving home from work and i see this vision and i start writing it down mm-hmm. and just collecting i had a notebook i started carrying a notebook around mm-hmm. and started writing everything down as it would come and mm-hmm. i would tell him and he would get excited and was right there with me the whole the whole way and yeah it was just beautiful because he was like go babe just go 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 and whatever I wanted or whatever I needed or thought, he'd go find the answer. You know, like mm-hmm. if I didn't need to have a business plan, he writes the business plan. I didn't mm-hmm. need to find, he gets the realtor to find the place. I mean, he was just, it was just a beautiful thing um, being able to work together like that. And he just, he believed in it 100% from the mm-hmm. very beginning. Hmm. And so it was, it just, it was a beautiful thing, the birth of Wins of Liberty. And when was that birth? When did Winds of Liberty arrive? So I think if you look at the LLC documents, <laughs> it was uh, uh, 2015, I believe. Okay. Uh, no, 2015. Okay. And then okay. in 2016 uh, is when we actually started, you know, gotcha. formalizing the work and then began right. part time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then it just grew from there. So tell us what is Winds of Liberty, Hope and Wellness? center and how are the services that you provide um, serving your community? What is it? Tell us what it is. It's your baby. <laughs> so ah. Winds of Liberty really is exactly what you have kind of stated early on. It really mm-hmm. is. Um, we provide individual counseling. We mm-hmm. provide marriage counseling. We provide family counseling. We mm-hmm. provide financial coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a Christian-based mm-hmm. counseling center. So we're not Christians that work together, mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right? right? We want to provide therapy for pl- a safe place for Christians to come and get therapy. Mm-hmm. It is a marrying of education, formal learning with faith. Mm-hmm. right? To make sure that people are getting both, right? So mm-hmm. you're getting the educational piece, but you're also getting someone that can pray with you. Mm-hmm. Someone that knows the scripture, mm-hmm. someone that's going to let God lead mm-hmm. um, our relationship, our therapeutic relationship together, right? Mm-hmm. So that you are really being guided towards hope because Jesus is the blessed hope, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And, and in fact, the, the everything from the building to the name to the service we provide was all ordained and planned by God. We just said, yes, it's kind of like, you know, he'd say, you know, we were kind of like saying, Lord, tell us what to do and we'll go. And so he's like, build it, go, I'll send them. And he began sending people in right away from the moment we opened up our doors. Okay. And I, and I, I just want to say, and tell me if I'm wrong, that being a Christian is not a prerequisite to accessing your services? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely yeah. not. I would say probably most folks that come are not, are not Christians. Mm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. Okay. But they keep coming back. <laughs> well, then you're doing <laughs> something right. Yeah. And I think people know, even though they may not walk that out in their own lives, when right. it comes time for help, mm-hmm. I think we know, people know uh, Christians mean business. Mm. And, and more than likely, they're going to get something that's going to help them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I was um, studying your website and I said this. I don't know if I said this to you, but I love it when a company builds a website that answers every question I could possibly have about what they are, who they are and what they have to offer. And your website does that. Every <laughs> question that I could possibly have about winds of liberty is answered on your website. So I want to talk a little bit about um, your core values. And then we're going to talk about 
some of the services that you provide and what that, that what that would look like for someone who came to you for um, counseling or came to you because their money is jacked up and they need some help. Sandy, I just want to say too that, that even that was de- that even that was designed. I, I I told you I said I cannot stand it when I want a service and I can't find out the information unless I contact somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? yeah, I feel like, yeah, like there's a secret, like there's hidden. You know, like well, how I, how much is this going to cost me? Mm-hmm. And so yes. that was our plan. Let's put it out there. There's no secrets. Let's put it out there. Yeah. They want to do it or they don't. I really appreciate you guys doing that too, because most webs, most companies don't, it's like a trick or it's like a surprise, (laughs) you know, what the fees are and that I won't even, I won't even bother to figure out who you are, what you do. I need you to tell me before I (laughs) get the phone to call you to make an appointment. This is what you're going to get. This is how much it's going to cost. Exactly. That's what I need. I don't know if everybody else is like that, but that's how I am. So if you don't tell me that on your website, I'm probably not going to patronize you. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have time. I'm busy. Right. Yep. right. So exactly. I want to talk about the core values. You have seven core values. And I have, I created a banner for that so we could go through it together. Sandy, you did her homework. Wow. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. Look We're looking at your mission statement. We yes. inspire, empower, and equip people to pursue personal and financial freedom. Why is personal and financial freedom so important, Jay? Talk to me. Uh, um, I, you know, I think that I think it comes down to. Uh, I believe we are meant to live in liberty. We're Mm -hmm. meant to be free. Mm -hmm. Uh, And even though those of us who may not be physically captive, Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of people who are captive mentally and uh, captive financially. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think in order for us to live our best lives, Mm -hmm. uh, not only for ourselves, Mm -hmm. but for the people in our circles, for the people in our communities, the people in our families, Freedom is important because a free person can help other people. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so that that's really what this is about. And and, and uh, it is Christian based. It is it is everything that we do and teach is 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 bathed in scripture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we believe that that is God's ultimate will for us is to be free in every area of our lives. Uh, and so we designed programs <laughs> to help people proceed to help people achieve that. Um, and it is not something in many cases that you can just pray for. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Say a prayer and get up and, and go on about your day. We're working with people who have to work for it. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to live it out. We have to walk it out. Uh, and and what we're treat, uh, showing people how to do is how to win every day. Mm-hmm. And if you win every day, then you're going to win in life. Right. Um, I saw something on your website. It's kind of like, to me, it sounds like your motto. And I want to read it because it really touched me. I was like, oh, wow, that's it. That's it. It says, hope is stronger than fear. Are you looking for someone to hope with you? We will. I love that. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, between COVID and companies closing and school shootings and black men becoming extinct at the hands of the police, amongst other things, this world needs some hope. So the fact that you, the name of your counseling center is the Hope and Wellness Center, there's there's got to be a reason behind that. What is your what is your, um, why do you think hope is so important, Cornelia? And why did you inject that into Winds of Liberty? Well, like we said before, there's nothing that we did. Um, in Winds of Liberty without getting God's approval or, or mm-hmm. go ahead. And so mm-hmm. even the name mm-hmm. came from Jesus. I, mm-hmm. I, 
it just came from Jesus and it came from um, the scripture of Jesus being that blessed hope. Mm-hmm. And there is no hope outside of him being a part of the process, part of the healing process, part of the liberty process. Um, the winds it comes from the scripture of the spirit being a wind and you don't know where the wind blows. You can hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it's going. And that's the spirit. Mm-hmm. Right. So the whole thing really was named after Jesus, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. He is the winds of our liberty. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and, and it is, hope really is stronger than fear. Right. And, and people today need people to hope with them. Yes. They are so broken and they are so scared and so mm-hmm. afraid and they need it not to be a game. And they need to know that you, if many of my clients know that I am believing with them, mm-hmm is they don't have it to believe yet themselves. Mm -hmm. And so when they can look over and they can see me, I'm right here, not going anywhere. I am right here with you. We're going to believe together Mm -hmm. until you get to the other side. Then they start believing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They start going for it and going after it, right? right? And so, I mean, that that's the journey. Sometimes we just need someone to say, yep, you got this and I'm going to stay with you until you get there. Amen. I love it. I want to highlight your vision statement too. Um, uh, Oh, this is your, this is your values in a world that is changing all around us. We are committed to fulfilling our mission and serving our clients effectively and in the spirit of excellence at winds of Liberty. There are seven core values and beliefs that we will serve as a that will serve as a compass to our behaviors decisions and actions and i and i want to read what those are number one is hope integrity responsibility discipline growth stewardship and truth Mm -hmm. and i really want to hone in on truth because there's a quote um on the website And Jay, I'm going to direct this question to you. It says, truth is the foundation for freedom. What does that mean? Uh, um, I think for a lot of us, uh, and myself included, when we think about areas where uh, we have become free or that Mm -hmm. we've been working towards freedom, Mm -hmm. um, one of the first things we had to do was to face the truth. Um, and for a lot of us, that truth is, look, what I've been doing up until now is not working. Come on. I've tried X, Y, and Z, and none of it has worked for me. Um, I need to do something different if I'm going to achieve different, if I'm going to be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so whether we're talking about money or whether we're talking about uh, working on a marriage or whether we're talking about just trying to become better as a person, mm-hmm. that depression or anxiety or whatever it is Mm -hmm. it starts with the truth and 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 that's one of the things we get to as quickly as possible with our clients what's the truth of your situation right now Mm -hmm. let's let's cut through all the all the other stuff that i'm not i'm not really concerned about what your mama told you (laughs) right all right let's talk about the truth what's going on Uh, and then once we get there oh yeah then we can start talking about how do we how do we build on that um, change what we need to change, build what we need to build so that you can start winning. That's um, the trauma work too, Sandy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes clients come in and they've had a horrific childhood. They've had some real serious trauma mm-hmm. um, happen to them, whether it be childhood, young adulthood or whatever. And trying to deny that truth, I know it's painful, but mm-hmm. if you try to deny that truth or minimize that truth mm-hmm. and and act as if it didn't happen or if it didn't yeah. exist, you will never become free from it. Right. And so sometimes though, you need somebody to go there with you, to sit there with you. Mm-hmm. As you begin to embrace the truth of my childhood was, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So now I can start to heal. You cannot heal until you accept the truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you are counseling an individual, <clears throat> And they're telling you, you know, why they're in the predicament that they're in, in terms of their finances, their mental health, their relationship, or just 
their relationship with themselves. How much of that would you say has to do with unaddressed, unhealed childhood trauma? Well, I would, I, I, I'd like to even go a step back. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, Sandy, like you said, when somebody comes in and they are telling you uh, the truth of their situation, oftentimes they don't know it. That's mm -hmm. the whole point. They're coming mm -hmm. in because they don't know why they're in this situation. Right. And it's us that connects the dots. Right. But right? you're responding this way because this. Mm -hmm. Let's connect those dots so that mm -hmm. we can start doing something different. Mm -hmm. Right. So often they're like, I don't know why I do this. I don't know why I sabotage myself. I don't know why I don't know how to save money. I don't know why. And as we start digging and talking to them and it starts to come out. Mm -hmm. Right. And they start to realize, oh, this mm -hmm. is why mm -hmm. I do this. Mm -hmm. Now let's get at the truth of it mm -hmm. so we can start to heal it. Mm -hmm. So have you found that. um the trauma in our lives, the unhealed trauma, has a direct effect on how we show up in the world as an individual and then as part of a couple and then in a marriage and then in our money. Is it all linked together? Yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. So, so when you're counseling engaged couples or couples that are in a relationship. What is your advice for them as it relates to the changes that happen when you go from being a couple that's dating to being a married couple? I mean, we can't really we can't really say exactly how it's going to change, but there are some there are some things that um for the most part, everybody goes through as they make that transition from being a couple dating and being engaged to being a married couple. So how do you how do you help walk people through those steps? Either one of you is fine. Yeah, yeah. well, we actually she, uh, she actually developed a uh, premarital uh, curriculum that we of course she did. She's Cornell. Yeah, she. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> uh, and that we've actually taken, uh, walked a number of couples through that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, we do that together. I, mm -hmm. I take a piece of it, she takes most of it. Um, and it is designed to do just that, to walk them through um, uh, that transition because it, it definitely is one. It is. Uh, and so I'll, I'll just touch on a couple of things that I mm -hmm. tend to share and I'm sure she, she can fill in. But mm -hmm. uh, one of the things, and, and one of the things that we do do is uh, as part of that, we separate the couple. Right. right. So I'll spend some time usually with the man and she'll right. spend some time with the woman. Right. And, I, and one of the things that I'm covering is preparing him for uh, a life of pursuing mm. your spouse and just reminding them that 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 the pursuit doesn't stop once she says I do. Right. And you all you all make that transition that there's something inherent in a woman they need to feel pursued. And so to to just remember that. Mm. And to commit, commit to a lifetime of that. Ooh, that's good. Uh, it is, yeah. And mm -hmm. and and you know, sometimes guys come in and they, you know, they've been listening to their dad or they watch this or they watch that, mm -hmm. and they and they come in with preconceived ideas about what it means to be married. Mm -hmm. And so I listen and then try to, for my own wisdom, and it helps that I've been married twenty nine years, and I'll tell mm -hmm. them that. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you something I read in a book, right? I'm telling you what I've lived and what I've worked out. Yeah. Uh, and so, and yeah. And what so, you read in a book. And what I read. <laughs> yeah, we did some reading too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, and, and then the other thing that I think is really important is the importance of covering mm. your wife. Mm -hmm. And that the woman that you see today, that's not going to be the woman she is in five years, right. 10, 15, 20 years. She's going to change. Right. But evolve and grow just like you will. Right. Um, and so, uh, teaching them to cover, learn how to cover their wives in prayer uh, and reading. Um, thinking about her relationships with other women, her relationship mm -hmm. with her children, mm -hmm. pray over her mind, her visions, her heart, mm -hmm. all of those things. And a lot of times it's like, they don't understand, but I'm telling you, take this list home with you and keep it somewhere safe. Because in five years, I guarantee you, you're going to pull it out. Mm -hmm. and there's going to be someone here that's going to minister to you. Mm -hmm. So just trying to plant seeds 
for a lifetime, which is not always easy because even when we first got married, mm -hmm. we didn't know. We didn't know what life was going to be like for us in 10, 15, 20 years. Right. Um, and so we were lying, we started relying on seeds that were planted in us even before we met. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you find that it's the men that have more trepidation about the marriage than the women? And you spend more time with both of them. What do you think? Well, I just want to say too, though, as he's doing that, I'm telling the woman to be to, as he's saying, pursue mm -hmm. my one on one with the women. And this is just a small part. I mean, this is an mm -hmm. eight week course, right? Sure, sure. Um, yeah. I'm telling the woman, be somebody he wants to chase. Mm -hmm. Always. Oh. Don't, ever, don't ever stop. Mm -hmm. Be someone from today till 101, someone that he wants to chase. Be chaseable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, I'm so gonna have to put that on the shirt. Be chaseable. <laughs> yes, and then I'm telling them the same thing about the prayer. You know, so you're you're praying for his visions and his dreams, and you know, and so it marries. Right. Yeah. So what does it look like when a woman is not chaseable? What does that look like? Yeah. How does it show up? It's. it's couple different ways. One of the ways that it, that it has shown up, and now I'm thinking about um, married couples that come in and, and, and it's broken and they want right. to be fixed. So one of the ways that it, it definitely shows up is when she's no longer the woman, he no longer recognizes her as a woman that he dated. Mm. Mm -hmm. like, where did you go? Mm -hmm. All you do is take care of the kid. <laughs> like, what happened to that independent, independent spitfire woman that had all right. these goals and these dreams and was a shake or mover like who are you right right and that's easy to do now that's easy yeah. to do especially yeah. when the children come yeah yeah once the kids come it's very easy to get lost in the sauce yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole world starts to revolve around your children yeah and i don't know if that's the best way to handle things i think that you need to still be holding on to your spouse because when the kids leave it's just going to be the two of you and right. like you just said, you'll be standing there looking at each other like, who this? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So exactly. it's important that you balance that thing out. Yes, you, you need to raise your children together. Yes, your children need to have your full attention. They need to know that you love them and you care about them. They need discipline. They need structure. They need help with homework. You got to feed the little people. All yeah. of the things that come into <laughs> that. But at the same time, you don't want to lose sight of each other. That part is really, really crucial. I like what you said, Cornelia, about, you know, your husband looking over at you and just like, what happened? And when did it happen? And how did I miss that? Right. It happens. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Have you ever counseled a couple premarital and just thought, Lord, have mercy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The last thing y'all need to do is get married. Yeah. 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 So how do you handle that? Well, the good news is, is that we actually have kind of a, oh, I don't even know how to talk about the color code. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I did. I did the color code. Oh, you did? I, I, did. I did. I was white. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, so then you're kind of familiar with the color code. The color code is a personality science, right? And it was developed by a man by the name of Dr. Taylor Hartman. And he is a Christian and he really feels like the color code was given to him with divine clarity. Mm -hmm. It is the only personality test that we will give out. And everybody that comes through our doors have to take the personality test because your communication style is in there. Um, and it's who you are at your core and it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. So that gives us the language to be mm -hmm. able to talk to people. So premarital couples, couples that have issues will take the color code. And so now I can just say, look, you're red, you're blue, do the math. There it is right there, you know, where you're going to complement each other and where you're not. So there's no surprises. Mm -hmm. Like it's all laid out for you. There's mm -hmm. no surprises. Here it is. So I can tell a couple, you two are going to have to work extra hard at this because you're polar opposites. Right. Right. There it is. You can read it. Right. And, um, or you two, you know, hand in glove, like you two have this and here's where some of your issues are going to be. And, mm -hmm. and Here's where you guys are going to work really well together. Here's where you have to step back and give your partner space. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we do a we color code comes first mm. um, in most of the work 
that we do so that we can have that language to help couples be able to communicate and talk to each other about their differences and what works well with them together mm -hmm. um, as a couple. So have you ever had to advise a couple to wait on getting married? Hmm. Take a little more time. No. And would, you, would you advise that if, if you felt like they needed to wait? So what I would say, what I say to my couples or even somebody that I'm doing individual counseling or family counseling, like I can see a huge train wreck getting ready to happen in a family mm -hmm. situation, right? Mm -hmm. um, I will often tell them as a therapist, because we kind of have like our own code of ethics, if you will, like a doctor do no harm, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the counseling world, our, world, our code of ethics is I cannot tell you what to do. Right. You are the master of your life. Right. But what I can tell you, I highly suggest. So that's usually what I say. I cannot tell you what to do, but I highly suggest mm. you. And then I will, because my most of my clients know I, I'm not going to play around with you. I'm straight shooter. Yeah. So, right. So, Jay, in your counseling with the men, do would you say that the majority of men come in knowing? Um, or having an idea of what it's going to take to be in a healthy marriage and to, to be the kind of husband that knows how to protect and provide and um, pursue? Or is that a conversation that you have to have? You know, and, and is it an aha moment for a lot of men? Or do, do some men already know, yeah, I know this is these are the steps that I'm going to need to take as a husband. And this is what it might look like for me. Yeah. It, uh, it really comes down to uh, every, every, every guy, at least in my uh, experience has been a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, I find generally the, the ones who uh, either come from strong marriages, mm -hmm. uh, they've grown up seeing it or they're involved in a faith community, a church mm -hmm. of some kind. Mm -hmm. Um, which we get a lot of referrals from, uh, mm -hmm. from people who are who are part of church, uh, mm. church affiliations. Okay. I find that they have they usually come in with a pretty solid base, right. um, and if they're young, you know the chances are that they've not they've not worked through a lot of issues. Maybe they came up uh, as part of their childhood, mm. Mm -hmm. um, and so the conversation is about, <laughs> you know, for a lot of us, we're getting married as we become men. Mm. So mm -hmm. we're learning what it's like, yeah. what it means <laughs> to become a man while we're taking on the responsibility of becoming a husband. Woo! And, right. So so that trilogy, those three things are happening mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Uh, and it is it can be hard mm -hmm. uh, for 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 a lot of men to even think about that. Mm -hmm. And so I want them to understand the gravity of it, mm -hmm. the seriousness of it. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I say often is, listen, you're not now you're taking on more accountability when you mm -hmm. get married. Mm -hmm. Up until now, it's just been you. Right. But now God's going to look at you and he's going to say, how have you treated that daughter that I gave you? Right. Um, she is his daughter before she is your wife. And I, I, I want to make sure they understand that. Mm hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you stand before the creator, mm -hmm. he's going to have a conversation with you about what you did with what he gave you. And, and is she, that your messaging? Is that your messaging to a to to a question a, a couple that may not be a Christian couple? Is that still your messaging? Uh, but, well, yeah. Usually if I'm going down that road. They're believers. You know, they're Christian. Oh, gotcha. They're okay. part of the church. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and just making sure that, you know, it, you know, they understand that, 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 that they're going to be part of the conversation now, your wife and your children. Um, mm -hmm. That's part of your accountability. Mm -hmm. And while the stuff that goes on in your house, uh, all of it may not be your fault, but it will now be your responsibility. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's good. It may not be your fault. But as the head of your home, it is your responsibility to fix it, heal it, whatever you need to do. I like that. And 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 that doesn't mean that the woman doesn't have responsibility. That's not what that means. Absolutely. It right. means that the man, the husband leads out and then the wife 
comes in and you work together to work out, to work out whatever issues that you're having. Is that yeah. what you mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Definitely a team approach. Uh, and you know, the man and woman have different roles. Right. Uh, but, but, but I, I, when I have the opportunity to speak to the man one-on-one, mm-hmm. uh, I want him to understand the, the seriousness of the situation. Okay. So. so we've got the premarital counseling, we've got the marriage counseling, and then there's the mental health aspect of what Winds of Liberty does. Tell me about that, Cornelia. Uh, yes. So we also um, do your um I guess, traditional mental health type of work. So we have clients that are coming in and they're dealing with anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, They're dealing with depression, sometimes Mm -hmm. bipolar, borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of times if they're coming in for marriage counseling, there's some issue like um, infidelity Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, they're fighting about finances, which is, you know, that's your part, the financial coaching part. Um, Mm -hmm. And, um, so there's lots of different reasons why, why people will come through our doors uh, looking for somebody to hope with them or help them. Childhood traumas, um, you name it. Uh, there's so many reasons why people come through our doors looking for um, some help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I don't think people really understand how childhood, unhealed childhood trauma defines how you show up in the world as an adult. Mm -hmm. I don't think people really understand. Um, Most people don't even know they have triggers. Correct. They just know if somebody says something to them the wrong way, they snap. Mm -hmm. But they don't make the correlation between the snap and the unhealed childhood trauma. So how do you how do you begin to address that in your mental health Counseling, and I want to say too that Cornelia, you are a licensed mental health counselor. Yes. Correct. Correct. So, so, how do you begin to address that? Usually, when people come in, they kind of have an idea, right? They've kind of reached the place in their life mm-hmm. um, where they're like, something's wrong, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, something's really wrong with me, and I need to figure it out. I feel broken. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sad. I'm lonely. I'm suicidal. I'm I'm depressed all the time. I worry all the time. So they start to know that something's um, something's wrong, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times, clients come in. They want to be fixed, right? Like you know, help you know, fix me. Um, and so it really starts with communication, um, conversation, allowing them to tell me um, their story. Uh, mm-hmm. the first part in, in any good therapeutic relationship is building a relationship, right? right? One where there is mutual trust, mutual respect, and they need to know that they can tell my, all my clients will tell you, they can tell me anything. There's no judgment, mm-hmm. right? Like you can tell me anything and I'm not going to judge you. Mm-hmm. Um, so they need to feel that way as well. And as they start to open up and talk more, then they start to reach a point of, wanting to uh, explore and find out the reasons why they're sabotaging their life. Mm-hmm. Why is this depression manifesting in my life this way? Why is this rage manifesting in my life this way? Why can't I hold on to relationships? They start to want to figure out why. And once they get there, then we can start really talking about um, their past and their history and what that looks like and start connecting some of those dots for them um, cause once again, there, there isn't any healing until you can embrace that past and you can, and you can embrace that truth. Mm-hmm. Um, there's really five phases to change. The first phase is really just contemplating whether or not I want it. And that's when we get the phone call. They haven't even really made up their mind that they want to do it. They're just contemplating. Do I want to do this? Mm-hmm. Pre-contemplation, contemplation, and then you go into wanting change, right? So the first time- step, the fir- I, I just want to reiterate what you said. The first step is you deciding for yourself, do I want to change? Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. Because y'all can want it all day long. That's right. If they don't want it, it's an exercise in futility. Nothing nothing changes until you you change. Nothing changes. I can be six months with somebody before they're ready to change. They're just talking. You're very patient. I've got to listen. The patience of Job. (laughs) 
<laughs> right? That's probably why I'm not that I'm not in that line of work. I'm like, Look, yeah. you no, know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. So, so the change has to start with the individual. First, first, the acknowledgement that there are things that need to change yeah. is the starting point. Yeah. And then what's number two? Then they, they actually go first with pre-contemplating. Mm -hmm. Then they start to contemplate it a little bit more. <laughs> mm. And then they go into phase three where they're like, okay, I'm ready. So now they're ready for a plan. They're ready to, to make an action plan. And I think that that's why our, I, I just want to say that I think that that's why our business is so successful and we get so many people coming in mm -hmm. um, making referrals is we actually have action plan. You get homework. If you're going to come see JR, you're going to get homework. Like mm -hmm. we will give you, <laughs> you need to go out, practice or some steps, come back, let's talk about, you know, so we're not just going to talk you to death. We're going to, let's get in there. Let's work. Um, so when we get to that phase, I'm, we're going to work and I'm going to set out a treatment plan with you. That's going to require you to do some work. Um, and then we're going to talk about it. And then we go to the next phase where they're actually doing the work and some real changing and start to happening. And then you can go into maintenance, right? Mm -hmm. You just keep it up and you're maintaining. Okay. So let's talk about money, Jay. <laughs> you said <sighs> truth is the foundation of freedom. Does that mean you got to tell the truth about your jacked up money? Yep. Okay. How you do yeah. that? Uh, it starts with the budget, mm, mm -hmm. right? Um, seven out of 10 of us don't budget. Um, mm. And we're living paycheck to paycheck mm. uh, and don't know where our money's going. Mm -hmm. And I have I have had an opportunity to, to coach uh, people who are just getting started out in life mm -hmm. and to people who are preparing to retire. Mm -hmm. um, and the questions tend to be the same. And that is, where is my money going? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, that's where the truth is. We need to we need to figure out how money is flowing in and out of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's let's put some things down on paper. And that's usually where I start. Forgive me for looking down. I have a myriad of people texting me saying they can't find the live. And oh. this happens every time I go live <laughs> with Girl Talk Sunday. I can't I'm find saying, it. Why don't go to my Facebook page? <laughs> Yeah. Or go to Best Life TV on YouTube. I say it all the time. And it never fails. I get people texting me. So I'm Do trying you to take a commercial break. No, I'm you know. just I'm sending I'm sending out the uh the link so they can, yes, yeah. they can join us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so even with the money part, you gotta tell your truth, you gotta tell the truth about gotcha. about where you are right now financially. Okay. Yeah, I equate it to uh turning on the lights mm -hmm. and looking in the mirror. Uh, mm -hmm. you know. We can we can talk all day, but until we know kind of what's going on with you and, and what's going on with your money, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's not much we can do. So we have to turn on the lights and then we have to look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Have you ever found that the way someone views money or handles their finances is a trauma response? Hmm. Yeah, no, that's 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 a great question. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Again, depending on the person and, and their history, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I found that uh, a lot of times the way people are handling money is 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 directly related to how they saw it being handled. So it can be a learned behavior. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and if you grew up uh, and and everything was always an emergency mm. in house when it came to money, mm -hmm. then that's that's the mentality you're going to bring into your into your today. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I see that all the time. Okay. Okay. So, so the way your parents modeled how to handle finances is usually how you'll do it too, until you become aware that you're doing it that way. That's right. But yeah. if they did it the right way, then, okay, of course you, you want to do what they did. Yeah. But if it's, if it's always survival mode, or like you said, everything is an emergency or, there's no, there's no such thing as delayed gratification. It's like, I want it, I'm going to get it. Yeah. Then if you see that growing up, then more than likely, that's the way you're going to handle your finances too. Is that what you're saying? 
That's right. Yeah. And you might, you know, uh, many of you might have heard the expression that more is caught than taught. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really that really speaks to how as youth, as children growing up, mm -hmm. we tend to pick up more just of what's not necessarily said to us mm -hmm. than what is said to us. Mm -hmm. so someone who's formerly trying to teach you something, you're going to pay way more attention to mm -hmm. what you're seeing and hearing outside of that. Mm -hmm. So you said telling the truth about your money is the first step. What's the second step? Um, well, so once we know the truth, then we start figuring out, okay, what are your goals? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I firmly believe that that money should fund the purpose. Mm. Ooh, uh, y'all just give me all kind of t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> money should fund purpose. Say more yeah. about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not, uh, you know, so the average, you know, the average income earner in the U.S. is probably going to make, you know, somewhere between 1.7 and, and 2.8 million dollars mm. over the course of their working career. Right. And there's lots of factors that determine, you know, where you're going to be within that continuum. But that's quite a bit of money, uh, you know, to flow in and out of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the conversation needs to be then, all right, what is what am I going to do with what I get to keep? Mm -hmm. Right. So we're not we don't get to keep all that. We got to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. We got we got to take care of. But with whatever is left, um, what what how am I going to use that to further my own goals. Um, and if I'm a believer, how am I going to honor God? Right. With mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, that conversation then becomes, what you know, what are my goals financially? Uh, and then what are the steps that we need to, to map out to get there? Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> so are you saying that you, your money should have a purpose? If you, if yeah, you, if you I, attach a purpose to the absolutely. money that you make. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when we we sort of work that out in our budgeting, in the budgeting mm -hmm. process. I usually teach people to budget every month. Mm -hmm. And so essentially what you're doing is you're giving every dollar that you earn an assignment. Mm -hmm. And you're giving, you're putting that assignment in writing. Oh, that's good. Right? And it's on paper. Mm -hmm. And so before the month begins, you already know, okay, if I'm earning uh, $3,500 this month, I already know where it's going because I plotted it out on paper. Mm. Now I'm not wondering where my money went. I'm mm -hmm. telling you where to go. Mm -hmm. You right. tell your money where to go. Child, where were you when I was 20? Yeah. Because <laughs> my money was thing. telling me what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. Give your money an assignment. Every month, mm -hmm. you should be the one telling your money what their purpose is, what its purpose right. is. That's really good, Jay. Most people don't get that kind of teaching growing up. Not all, but most people don't get that kind of teaching growing up. It's just, I'm going to do what I saw my parents do. Right. And it's not because, and it's not until you become aware that what you saw your parents do is not, is not working. Um, but again, that takes you telling the truth about what your money is doing and where it's going. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So you write down your goals. You attach a purpose to your money. You give your money an assignment. And then you tell your money where it's going to go every month. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. I really like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I might have to come see y'all. <laughs> Please I'm do. I'm doing better. I'm, yeah. I'm better. I'm better. <laughs> I am. I'm yeah. way better than I used to be. Yeah. I have learned um, that I don't have to buy everything I see. That's right. You know, I can wait. I can wait and not wait for it to go on sale either. Just wait because I don't need it. <laughs> usually, usually when I get ready to buy something, I don't need that. Right. right. I just, yeah. I just yeah. want it. But yeah. it, I don't need it. And I'm learning to appreciate and put into practice delayed gratification. That's right. And I think that's where that's where uh, the purpose part comes in, too. Yeah. Um, is if if uh, if I have a purpose that I'm mm -hmm. trying to fulfill in my life, mm -hmm. then I'm going to put I'm going to I'm going to make it a priority to allocate resources to that. Mm -hmm. And so if I know, hey, I want to start a business or mm -hmm. I want to start a ministry. Mm -hmm. Right. Then I know I can't be spending all my money on clothes. I got to start setting some money aside for this vision that I have, mm -hmm. right? And that's why it's important to have one and to start building one so that your money is just not coming in and going out. Mm -hmm. in and going out. 
you're not assigning it to anything, right? Um, and so that's really important also, not only in individual, your individual life, but mm-hmm. when you get married too, what is the ministry of your family? Mm-hmm. What is the mirror? Mm-hmm. What is the ministry of your marriage? Right? Mm-hmm. What is the, wait, 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 wait. You can't drop that kind of bomb and we can't, we got to dissect that thing. <laughs> what is the ministry of your family? Yeah. What is the ministry of your finances? Is that what you said? Yeah, the ministry of your marriage. The ministry of your marriage. Yeah. And the ministry of your family. Yeah. Wow. Okay. The ministry of your marriage. Talk. T- tell me more about that. Say more about that. Yeah. So um, we know that not everybody. I mean, not all couples are going to do uh, something formal like we do, right? Mm-hmm. When you go out and start a business together, that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, another couple might decide, you know what, we we uh, want to be a safe haven mm-hmm. for other couples. Mm-hmm. We want to be a place where other couples want to come and spend time with. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're if you're trying to do marriage the right way, you're in small company in this country. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you, you you know you can't go out and find a lot of people that's that's trying to do it the right way. It's really tough. And so you might decide, hey, we want to be that family. We want to be that house. We're mm-hmm. going to have couples. We're going to have them come over. We're going to play games. We're going to mm-hmm. cook dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, that's our ministry. Mm-hmm. Right? And so you might decide, hey, so we're going to do this. So we're going to start putting aside money so we can buy food. We're going to buy games. Mm-hmm. Or we might, we might uh, want to rent out a, a movie uh, facility mm-hmm. so we can have everybody come out. We're going to rent out the whole thing and show a movie. Uh, it's wide open what you can do. Right. Um, but the, uh, I think as a couple, you want to be praying about that right? and asking God to show you what is it that we can do together? Uh, you know, marriage is, is one of the most important institutions God created. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think he would he would give it to us <laughs> and not give us the opportunity and the ability to really make the most out of it. And ministry is one way to do that. Right. So, so Cornelia, I think what I hear Jay saying is that goal setting. Whether you're setting a goal to buy a house or you're setting a goal to become the kind of marriage that can be a ministry is crucial in your marriage. Is is that what I hear him saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I and I do believe that um, Christian marriages do have a ministry. You just have to figure out what that is. Mm -hmm. Um, And I do believe every marriage marriage, just like we do individually gives Mm -hmm. off an energy, Mm -hmm. right? Your marriage gives off an energy. Mm -hmm. We all have walked past somebody and go, they've got something. Yeah. Or walk past somebody and say, I don't know how they're going to make it. They got something. They got something too, right? Right. (laughs) Yeah. And so figure out what energy you want to put out there. Yeah. What kind of energy, you know, do you want to be the kind of marriage that people want to find out what you know? Right. I want, I want what they have. I want to learn more about that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that comes from having a ministry, having goals, working together as a team. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the questions, I just want to throw this out there right there. One of the questions that I post to all my marriage couples, whether you're doing premarital counseling or coming in because you have an issue, mm-hmm. is I ask them what gets people to that 50 year mark? Mm-hmm. Right? What mm-hmm. gets me? And, they, and I, it, it's a setup question. I'm not going to lie; it's a setup question. Mm-hmm. They throw out the, you know, your typical trust, you know, um, being able to trust the person, love, you know, commitment, and all that stuff. And I say all of that stuff is true, but all of that stuff is a byproduct. I said when the research is in, and couples who have made it to 50 plus years, mm-hmm. the thing that kept them together is they always felt like they were their marriage was a team. Mm. Teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it sounds so trivial, but they always felt like the other person had their back no matter what was going on. Mm-hmm. Fight, no fight, up, down, here, whatever. That person always has my back. And the rest will be there. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I love that. It's the teamwork. Yeah. Working together, having common goals. Yeah. And then having individual goals. Because you, you still have a life, even though you're married, you still have your own life. He has his, you have yours, and then you have yours together. And that's one of the things that I think is really important. You don't have to become Velcro. Hmm. 
because you're married. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As a wife, you can still have your friends that you hang out with. As a husband, you can have your friends that you hang out with because sometimes it's that absence that makes that heart grow fonder, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm stuck to you like glue all the time, <laughs> I don't know. And I think sometimes when people get married, they think that continuing to have an individual life that's in alignment with who you are as a couple now that now let, let me just say that your individual lives need to be in alignment with who you are as a couple but some some couples shy away from continuing their individual lives because they feel like i'm married now mm -hmm. so i got to give all my my friends the boot and just be with my spouse all the time and that's not the case am i wrong that doesn't make any sense if you think about it because I started dating you because what you were doing in your individual life. Mm -hmm. yeah. We weren't a couple. I liked who you were as an individual. Right. 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 So that's that whole, where'd she go? Mm -hmm. right. right. We were married and then I, she got lost. Like, who is this person? <laughs> right. Yeah. I, you know, I liked your friends, you know, <laughs> or whatever the case may be. And that's that whole chaseability that we were talking about. You got to remain you. Mm hmm. Right. Grow, mm -hmm. definitely grow and develop mm -hmm. and become, but don't lose who you are um, in the marriage because your daughter, right? Mm -hmm. Your sister, mm -hmm. right? Um, you've got purpose. Mm -hmm. right? um, there's so much more to you than just being the partner. Right. Absolutely. I agree 100%. At least there should be. There should be, you should have your own individual goals that you set for yourself. And then you have goals as a couple. Um, you should have hobbies of your own. And then you have hobbies that you do together. Mm. It just makes you so much more well-rounded as a couple, I think. And if you can go into your marriage with that understanding that just because we're getting married, it doesn't mean that we have to spend every waking moment together. You probably will the first two years because that's the honeymoon phase. And, you know, that that that's that's a given. That makes sense. But once the honeymoon phase wears off and you are Mr. and Mrs. Jones or Mr. and Mrs. Cantaloupe or whoever you are, if you have the understanding before you get married that it's important for you to keep your individuality, I think things go so much smoother in the marriage. I really do. Now, I am not the marriage counselor. You are. So you tell me, am I am I on the right track? Is, is, has, been, has that been your experience in your marriage counseling and your premarital counseling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Either. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's it's part of what what is so attractive to me mm -hmm. about my husband is the things that he does. Mm -hmm at work, like when he tells me about, you know, how he's handled the situation or how he ran a retreat or presented at this thing or did that thing. I mean, that's exciting to me. And that makes me, he's so smart. Mm -hmm. right? And there's so much more to him than just being, you know, holding my hand or taking me out to dinner. And, and it's exciting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He's a musician and listening to him play. I mean, there's so many things about him that's so exciting mm -hmm. that draws me towards him. How boring would it be if it was just me? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you agree? Do you agree with that, Jay? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and the same is the same is true of her too. Uh, you know, the hearing about what she's doing at work when I'm not there. Uh, uh, so besides the book knowledge, uh, mm -hmm. she just has developed an incredible ability to speak into the lives of people mm -hmm. uh, and to develop a rapport quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I hear the testimonies that she comes home and she hearing how she's spoken into people's lives and changed people's lives every day. Uh, that's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's a comedian too. I mean, you won't, you won't get to see that tonight, <laughs> but she does one, she does incredible, uh, uh, hilarious impressions, mm -hmm. right? So all those things, I mean, I think we bring we bring who we are. We try to bring who we are into this relationship. Keep it live. Keep it fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just we're loving it. So we talked about, you know, the cotton candy aspects of marriage and it can be it can be cotton candy. But I know that as marriage counselors, you have come across couples that 
are coming to see you because they're ready to call it quits. And as someone who was married for 28 years mm -hmm. and I've been divorced for two years now, I know that can be very, very traumatizing and yeah. difficult. Yeah. So talk a little bit about how you counsel a couple who is convinced that their marriage is over. Yeah. Most of the time, um, the couples that come into therapy, we're the, the, it's the last ditch effort, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so they're, they're giving it one uh, more try. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we're very clear that we're reconciliation counselors. But even in that, we tell people, but I'm not going to make the decision for you. And I'm not going to tell you not to. It's, oh, it's your choice. At the end of the day, I don't get to make that choice for you. It's your life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work with you for as long as I can to try to help it work. But if you change your mind, right, you mm -hmm. need to do what you need to do. Right. Uh, and I'm talking about things being safe. I'm talking about somebody being beat, mm -hmm. right? right, or in that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the time when they come, they're giving it one more effort, right? Mm -hmm. There is an occasion, Sandy, when... Um, somebody has dragged somebody into therapy and it's very clear that that, per that other person is is out the door. Hmm. And, I, and I call it as I see it, mm -hmm. right? I tell them, this person is, because I, I go straight there, I ask them, I need to know, mm -hmm. are you here because you, you're committed to um, giving it an opportunity and you're going to put 100% into it? Do you right. still love each other? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing anybody else? I have this list of questions. Right. Right. Depending upon how they answer, it's like, okay, we can do this or you guys aren't there. You're not there. Right. This person is ready to leave. Mm -hmm. Right. And so mm -hmm. I can't help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What you really need is an attorney. <laughs> right. right. Here are some names and numbers. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it really depends on where they are. But I do have a list of questions that I'll ask them to see just how committed they Now, they don't have to have both feet in the door, right? Sometimes one of the, uh, of the two will say, I don't know yet. Mm. I'm so hurt. Mm -hmm. I don't know yet. And mm -hmm. so in that situation, I'll ask them, how much time do we have? What are you willing to give? Can we, can we have 90 days? And can we evaluate after 90 days? Right. And they'll let me know whether mm -hmm. they're going to do that or not. Usually if they've come in the door, they are. Mm -hmm. But there have been the rare times like, mm, nope, I'm just coming here so that he can really listen to me in front of you that I'm done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stick a fork in it. And she's done or he's done. Yeah. Right. It happens. And I know we say God hates divorce and, you know, Christian couples shouldn't divorce. It happens. Mm -hmm. Even to Christian couples. Yeah. It happens. So I think that the most important thing is to help each individual walk through the process if divorce ends up being the final decision so that they come out healthier on the other side, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and even physically. Yeah. Because being in a marriage that's not working for an extended period of time can take a toll on your physical health yeah. mm -hmm. as well as your mental and emotional health. Yeah. And so, um, I would say that, you know, the most important, um, the most important thing that you'd want to do is make sure that each person is healthier on the other side of the marriage. And I, I and I, and I, I have been in therapy. I started therapy in 2021, and I go to therapy once a month. And um, good for you. Therapy has really helped me to see. <laughs> who I was and how I was in my marriage. Mm -hmm. Because we know hindsight is 2020. Yeah. So now that I'm single and I'm on the outside looking in, I can I can pinpoint when we started to veer off this way. Mm -hmm. And we were no longer going forward together this way. I know it, I can see it now. I couldn't see it then, but I see it now. And so my goal with therapy is to heal those parts of me that um, were really damaged while I was in the throes of 
trying to keep my marriage together. And um, I have to say that I'm not the same person that I was when I was married. Mm -hmm. I'm not that woman anymore. Yeah. And, and, and for me, that's a good thing because I, I've discovered some things about myself that I wasn't aware of. I wasn't, I wasn't aware of my own triggers that stemmed from unhealed childhood trauma. That's why I kept talking about that. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant until I started going to therapy. Yeah. And then I understood how that childhood trauma showed up in my marriage. And it was shocking to me. Hmm. It was shocking to me all of the ways that my trauma negatively affected my marriage. So that's why I think it's so important for in the premarital counseling to really dive into that childhood trauma. Trauma that you, it doesn't even have to be childhood, trauma that you faced along the road to becoming an adult. And then even after you've become an adult, any unhealed trauma needs to be addressed before you enter into marriage, I think. Again, I'm not the marriage counselor, you guys are. <laughs> I just think that you're doing yourself a disservice by going into a union with someone trying to ignore, you know, not just the elephant in the room, but like the five elephants in the room. <laughs> and right. being married is not going to fix childhood trauma. Yeah. If anything, it's going to make it worse. Mm. So if you can learn how to recognize it before you get married and work to heal it before you get married, then you have a better chance. To me, you have a better chance of staying married. But most people aren't even aware that the trauma that they experienced in their life is going to show up in you in some kind of way. Yeah. You know you say? And, and, and I'll just, I think, um, just speaking from our own personal experience, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how old you are when you got married, mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it is almost impossible for any person to have a handle on all that right. before they get married. Right. Um, one of the things that we, um, in addition to our friendship, one of the things that we talk a lot about is how much healing mm. we helped each other through mm -hmm. after we got married. Mm -hmm. There were some things that had happened in my life that I didn't tell her until after we got married. Right. And we healed together. Mm -hmm. She helped heal through some of that together and vice versa. There were mm -hmm. some things that I learned after we got married and just over the course of loving each other, over the mm -hmm. course of praying together, over the course of continuing our friendship, right. we healed some of that stuff together. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not it's not uh, it's a tall order mm -hmm. to ask someone to fix all that before they get married. Mm -hmm. um, now, to the, even if you don't fix it, though, even if you don't fix it before you get yeah. married, it's important to recognize that it's there. Yeah, yeah, and can I can I say something to, to that? Extent, yeah. So that that's all true. I think I think what I do tell people when we're doing premarital mm -hmm. counseling, Sandy, mm -hmm. is that um, so you have to be very careful. So a lot of people they get married and they don't realize. Here's where the childhood trauma it really can hurt a marriage is they don't realize that they're looking for that other person to fix their pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get married looking for that other person to fulfill this hole that they mm -hmm. have or this mm -hmm. gap or I need you to fix what my daddy did. I need you to fix what my mama did. I need you to right. love me so good that you fix right. that. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and they can't. They can't. And I tell people this all the time. Nobody can heal your trauma but you. That's right. So him walking alongside me and listening and talking to me mm -hmm. was healing for me as I was doing the work. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. I couldn't get down in there with him and do the work mm -hmm. that he needed to do. Right. But I could listen, guide, maybe say, oh, try to, you know, be there for him and support him mm -hmm. in the work. Um, and I couldn't expect him to fix my trauma. That's mm -hmm. my trauma. And I mm -hmm. couldn't fix his trauma. So what I hear you saying, Cornelia, is that my trauma, my triggers are my responsibility to heal. And he can help me heal. But the onus of that healing is on me. Yes. Is that what I hear you saying? I was having a conversation with someone the other day. <clears throat> and, you know, she was saying, I'm just not happy. I'm not happy. He doesn't make me happy. 
He doesn't make me happy. And I said to her, you know what? I had to learn that my husband, it was not his responsibility to be the origin of my happiness. Hmm. I should have been happy when he found me. <laughs> it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not his responsibility to be the origin of my happiness. Right. He can add to my happiness. But I should already have some level of happiness in my life before we even talk about dating, let alone getting married. I didn't know that when I got married, but I see that now. Mm. And I see how in my own marriage, I tried to make my my former husband the origin of my happiness. Mm. And that was not his responsibility. That was my responsibility. So I think sometimes we go into marriage thinking, like you just said, Cornelia, that this person is going to fix all my problems and all my issues. And I'm here to tell you that it does not work that way, nor has it ever, and nor will it ever. (laughs) It's just going to make the issues bigger. Because this person is going to be beating their head against the wall, trying to figure out how to fill a void in your life that only you yourself through God, through prayer can fill. And it's just not right to put that much pressure on your spouse. It's just not, it's not, it's just not, it's not right. So, and I think that's what a lot of couples do, especially young couples, because, you know, just like you said, Jay, we we don't know, we don't know what we're doing. It's tough. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's like you're setting setting yourself up for failure and you don't even know it. Yeah. But I would say, too, that um, for people that are in marriage or thinking about marriage, that doesn't absolve the partner right. the responsibility in playing a role in healing. Absolutely. Right. So we can't look at each other and say, oh, no, that's your issue. You need to fix that. <laughs> Good luck. Let me know when you're done. Right. No, right. I think the one of the core purposes of marriage is healing. Mm hmm. That's one of the, that's one of the gifts God gave us mm. is to heal in relationship with another person. Mm. So absolutely, um, yes, we have responsibility ourselves. Mm-hmm. But the partner that you've chosen, the partner that God has given you, mm-hmm. we also have some responsibility to mm-hmm. to, to play a role uh, in that healing. Right, and my point is that there's a certain level of healing that you, as an individual, should be working towards absolutely before yeah. you bring someone into your life yeah. and become a couple. Yeah. There's just there's just a responsibility that I have as an individual to do the inner work that must be done, so that I have a certain level of healing in my own life for my own issues, my own concerns, my own problems, my own trauma before I enter into a relationship. I believe that wholeheartedly. Do the work. And yeah, you got to do the work. Yeah. You, you got to do you got to do your own work. And if you know that you're dating someone that needs work and they're not willing to do the work, sis, run. Mm. I'm telling you. Run. I said run. Run. They're not ready. They're not ready. And all your love can't make them ready. You can't your love will not do it. Your commitment to to healing and wholeness won't do it. They have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I think that I, I just love your approach to interweaving mental health with healthy finance and a healthy union. I love how it all goes together and it all aligns together. It's so important that it's all aligned. It doesn't mean that you're never going to have any issues or problems in your marriage. That's not what it means. It just means that you have a firm foundation. You take that friendship foundation and on that you build your marriage foundation. And you're willing to help each other reach the goal of wholeness individually and as a couple. I just, I, I love the work that you do. I think that is so necessary and it's so important. How can people connect with you? Jay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so I see you have the, I don't know if everybody can see the website you have, but mm -hmm. lindsayliberty.com is our, is our website. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the best way because mm -hmm. it'll give you an introduction into who we are mm -hmm. um, and what we do. And then from there, uh, it shows you all the ways that you can connect with us. Okay, good. And I can tell you right now, that website is amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. It makes it so easy to just I make an appointment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Click the button. Yeah. It's not you don't have to go searching to figure out how to schedule something. It's all right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. Well, I this has been a really good conversation. Um mm. I think there are so many couples that not just couples, but individuals who are thinking about getting married or individuals who uh just need some guidance. I think that they can find that at Winds of Liberty. And I love that it's a God-centered, faith-based um, organization. I, I love that. I love the fact that the two of you decided as a couple that you wanted to birth this baby together mm -hmm. and then raise this baby together as a couple. I really love that. And you know how you hear sometimes, you know, oh, no, you can't work together as a couple. It'll never work. You'll be at each other's throat. <laughs> You know, people say that, but yeah, 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 and I'm sure, you know, you have ups and downs and, and, and stuff happens because that's just how that's just the nature of business. But um, I really applaud you for wanting to do this work together because you've done the work as a married couple mm -hmm. for almost 29 years. Mm -hmm. So you have something to offer the world. And I am thankful for you and I'm thankful for Winds of Liberty. And I really appreciate you coming on the show to talk about what it is that you do and why you do it, because the why is important. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's the why yeah. that will help people connect to you. So do you what do you want to say before we sign off? Cornelia? Oh, I just want to thank you for allowing us to um, come on and um, share our passion um, with you and who's ever listening and watching. And um, I thought your questions were amazingly <laughs> thoughtful. <laughs> so I really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, you're good at what you do. <laughs> really good at what you do. Thank you. Um, I'm just thankful to God for um, just designing our journey together to be one that all the knowledge that he allowed us to um, have in our life, all the resources that he provided. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think it's for us and then we find out it had nothing to do with us at all. It was actually for the kingdom of God. Right. <laughs> like, right. Um, all the way back to my first class with Dr. Pepper Schwartz, right? The marriage, mm -hmm. very first marriage class. Oh, I, took. I like her. Yeah. 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 So, I'm still giving out that stuff. And I, mm -hmm. I thought it was about this and it was, but it was about so much more. And, I feel like everything that God has allowed you and I to, to learn has all been about mm -hmm. ministry. It's always been about somebody else. Somebody else. Yeah. What do you want to say, Jay? Uh, yeah. Well, our pastor, uh, the, the church that we're attending said mm -hmm. the, the very same thing that when God blesses us, it's very mm -hmm. selfish about us. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, it's true. which is a really good reminder, right? So mm -hmm. I, wanna, I just want to affirm what you're doing, Sandy, first yeah. of all, thank you. Uh, yes. when, when we got the invitation to do this, uh, neither one of us hesitated. Um, mm -hmm. We have a tremendous amount of respect for you, Thank you. Uh, uh, separate from the show, mm -hmm. just you as a person uh, and having known you for a number of years. So appreciate what you're doing. Uh, and I know that I know that it's uh, I know you're helping people. I've seen a couple of episodes of some people that I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. So thank you for what you're doing. And I just want to say to anybody that's listening to this, um, that that uh, we're living in a time and in a world now where we just have to fight. Mm -hmm. We have to fight. We have to fight for freedom. You have to fight for what you want. Mm -hmm. And I just want everybody to believe that you have something worth fighting for. Right. Whether it's your mental health, whether it's your kids, your family, your wife, your business, your relationship with God, you have something worth fighting for. So. And so my, 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 I'm imploring you to fight 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 is worth it yeah absolutely absolutely girl talk sunday is a brave space for women to feel empowered to 
own, honor, and embrace their worth. Because understanding your worth and knowing who you are as a woman and a wo and who you are as um, uh, in God is one of the first steps to showing up in the world as a, as a mentally, emotionally, spiritually healthy person. Right. When you know your worth, mm. you Amen. are less likely. Right. Amen. Right? <laughs> Yeah. You're less likely to let the cares of this life take you under because you already know that God has your back and then your spouse has your back. Your husband has your back and you've done the work to be as healthy as you possibly can be body, mind and spirit. So anything that comes up, you can weather that kind of storm together in your God-centered marriage. That's what I, I really believe that. And even if you're not married, understanding your worth means that you understand what you will and will not tolerate. And understand, it means that you have standards for your life. Yeah. It means that you have a personal code of conduct. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> when something comes up against you that's not in alignment with any of those things, then you just, you just keep walking. Correct. No. But you got to know your worth in order to do that. And so Girl Talk Sunday is a platform that was given to me by God Amen. to help yeah. people, dis to most specifically to help women discover, embrace, and honor their worth. Yeah. And then you just build on everything, el everything else after that. But you got to know what the value that you hold right. as a woman, saved or not, it doesn't matter. Right. You got to know the value at, that you hold as a woman. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I am just um, I'm honored that God chose me. To, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, yeah. to be at the helm of this platform. And I will always make sure that my guests are in alignment with my own mission. Mm -hmm for Girl Talk Sunday. So we have, I'm already booked out to June. What? Yes, yeah. All um, right. So there's more it. to come. There's <laughs> more to come. I love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. I'm so glad that you are are doing this. This is this is precious and you're absolutely right. We have to um, know our worth, especially mm -hmm. as, as women, you know, as children of God, mm -hmm. um, um, made in his image. We have yeah. to know our worth and hopefully that will help us fight, be willing to fight and, and, mm -hmm. and wanting um, to fight, right? right? And if you need help, get the help to fight. That's right. Nothing wrong with asking for help right. to fight, right? And, and you can go right to Wings of Liberty <laughs> and get you some help so you can keep <laughs> fighting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I highly recommend it, as yeah. Cornelia would say. I yeah. highly recommend it. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's worth it. It's worth it. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank I you, Jenny. We, we've known each other a long time. I appreciate yeah. your friendship. Congratulations on 29, almost 29 years of marriage. That is amazing. That's not easy to do. Mm -mm. So the fact that you're still here and you're still together. And, I, and we still like each other. That's right. We still like each other and you love each other. Yep. And now you're presenting yourselves as a couple. Mm -hmm through the ministry of Winds of Liberty so that other people can learn how to still like and love each other 29 years into their marriage. That's right. I applaud that. I really do. Thank you. Thank you, my it. friends. W. Yes. Bless you. All right. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, All right. Well, that is our show for, the, for tonight. Thank you for joining me, everybody who took the time out to watch Girl Talk Sunday tonight. I appreciate you. I really do. I I can't do this show without you. Um, I, I'm very prayerful about the guests that I invite on the show because God always gives me a theme before I reach out to someone to be a guest. It's, I don't do it just, you know, I don't pull names out of a hat. I, I pray about who I who I invite to come on the show. And so um, I just want you to know that the guests that I do bring to this platform are guests that I feel 
have something to contribute um, in the work that they do to build the kingdom of God. And um, it's just really important to me to put, to put my best foot forward and to pr present guests that have something to say and something to offer that can add value to your life. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram now at Girl Talk Sunday with Sandy. It's a brand my brand new Instagram page. Thank you to everyone who um, is following me on my business page, Best Life Merch. Thank you. I have um, almost 500 followers. So thank you for that. I appreciate you so much. Um, information about next month's guest is coming out very soon. She's a young lady that I have a lot of respect for. And she's going to come on the show and talk about the journey that she went through um, in her own life and how some of the obstacles that she came up against have helped her to become more of the woman that she was created to be. So you'll learn more information about that guest in the coming weeks. I want to thank you again for being here tonight on Facebook and on Best Life TV on YouTube. Thank you so much. I love you all. Have a wonderful night. And I'll see you next month for Girl Talk Sunday. Have a great night.